Well, good morning, Glue Troopers. Max and Max's models here, and I got started on that little Aurora Beach 18, which is a repop of the comic kit. And most of you guys are familiar with the Beach 18, and this one looks a little different because it's actually a Beach 18 Super 18, which I believe was the E model that came about in 1953. It's got the flared wing tips, extended nose, and the raised cockpit. So that's why it looks a little bit different than the standard Beach 18 you're used to seeing. And first thing I did, of course, once I got it on the desk, was to inventory all the parts and make sure everything was there, and it was. And then it got a very nice isopropyl bath to get rid of mold release agent because that stuff can stick around forever. And then came the test fitting of the parts. And it has the big panel lines and impressions and everything you expect from a kit from the mid-50s. But the fit was actually pretty good. No real complaints. I did notice that the side windows uh, don't go in as a sheet. I was like, hey, they don't fit this way. So I've got a novel idea. Let's read the instructions. And sure enough, uh, the windows actually have to be uh, cut out individually. And they have to be placed from the inside going out. They do have flares or flanges on them. Also, the little overhead window, which is on every Beach 18 I've ever seen, and particularly more prominent on the later models, the high-rise cockpits, are only impressed in there. They're not actually a clear part, so you're going to have to uh, paint that or whatever you want to do with it. But it's outlined for you. So the first parts to go together were the wings, and I knew that I wanted to paint this airplane since the decals were pretty old and couldn't be trusted that I was going to uh, go ahead and do everything in what I call a reverse or a negative. I was going to paint the stripes and the numbers on the airplane and then we'll wait for the paint to harden, mask them off, then prime and paint the rest of the airplane. And that way I would peel off the tape and the numbers would be revealed, what I call doing a negative. You guys may remember my adventures in peeling the tape off the model of the flying saucer. That was weighing heavily on my mind. So I decided instead of using acrylics, what I would do this time is use enamels because I know they bite into the plastic and once you give them a day or two to harden, you can mask over them pretty safely. I did not put a primer coat on underneath because I want to make sure they were able to directly go into the plastic. Unfortunately, I hadn't used enamels in a while. I had a nice red one I decided to use and it didn't really brush apply very well. I, I The brush strokes kept showing and I couldn't get it to smooth out without making it super thick and I didn't want to do that. And I wound up stripping and repainting and trying different mixes and finally I got one that was more or less acceptable. What I realized was is that I needed to use a, a broader brush and just go over the whole area once it's done, then I can uh, let it all harden, mask off what I want, strip or reprime the rest of it. But it turned out to be a little more production than I expected because I hadn't used the uh, enamels in a while. And you tend to forget just how messy those things can be. And they're not like acrylics. They don't clean up so easy. But uh, I, I got it painted. It's in the box. And I'm going to let it just set until, well... That was yesterday that I did this, so I'm going to go check it out now, see if it is safe to tack it down. I might put a clear coat over it before I do. That's probably a good idea just to help, just in case. Uh, it's funny how something so seemingly simple can sort of take on a life of its own. But I haven't done this in a while, so not exactly being uh, the most astute student of painting. I have to be careful with it. The next thing was to go ahead and see if the decals were even any good. So I put the stand together, two-tone painted it, clear coated it, and I was shocked that the decals actually lifted without too much trouble. And I actually got them on the stand, but of course that's raised lettering. So once they dried, I was like, well, I'll put a little solve set on there. And unfortunately the solve set hit them and they just disintegrated. So it ain't over till it's over. As they say in aviation, the flight's not over till the prop has stopped and the chocks are in. So I uh, just went ahead and gave it a, a single aluminum one coat shot to give it that nice metal look. And that's where I had to stop because I wanted to give everything overnight to harden before I went any further. So I went ahead and started working on the Atlantis Boeing 2707 
Very straightforward kit. I already have one on the shelf that's in the Pan Am markings with the wing swept back. So I'm going to do this one in the Boeing house colors like it is on the box with the wing swept forward. Pose them side by side. And not a lot to mention about this kit except that the engines are side and position specific. Uh, so I made sure when I put the engines together to mark their numbers so I knew which one went where later. And got it masked off. The top is uh, white, so I'm just going to see if I can just get away with letting the white plastic do its job instead of painting areas that probably don't really need to be painted. And uh, it's, I got the primer coat on it, and that's where it's sitting right now. And I already have the uh, paint mixed uh, for the uh, that sort of uh, dark yellow bottom. And then the rest is in decals. These are the two kits that are waiting for me when I get to the Tarvis today. Now, that's what we got for this morning. thought you guys might just like a little update on what's going on on the desk. Okay, you guys take care of yourselves. We'll talk to you later. As always, model on.